Today is the day. Hockey is back. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling really, really excited. Like, seriously. I'm recording this video here on the night of July 27th, so it's the night before I'm actually uploading this video at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, but I'm so excited! Man, I just want to see some pucks out there and some skates and some goals. Oh man, I can't wait. But today, we're making a video talking about the NHL as a whole and talking about the whole bubble life that these NHL players are going to have to be living for the next few weeks. Now, bubble life is a very vague term, so I'm going to do my best to cover a very wide variety of actual news and interesting little facts and tidbits regarding the NHL and its bubble life that the players are going to go through. So without further ado, let's actually get onto the updates that the NHL have posted themselves about the virus results that they did earlier today. This is Monday, this is when everybody came and arrived at the bubble, and according to the NHL, after doing 4,256 tests, there were zero positives. It also noted that on Sunday, both Edmonton and Toronto were able to house all 12 teams each for a total of 24 NHL teams that are all going to be beginning phase four of the NHL return to play process. And yes, that is right. Zero positive tests, which is a very, very, very good number. We talked about this previously, but the plan for the NHL was to do daily tests on pretty much everybody. All the players, all the coaching staff, all the people that are involved in the bubble too. So not just the hockey people, but the food people and the hotel people and the cleaning service people, all these people are going to be tested regularly, and the restrictions and limitations as to who can go in and outside of the bubble freely, oh, they're going to be really strict. So you're not going to see a lot of players leaving the bubble to go to, you know, certain adult clubs like people in the NBA have. Furthermore, Carl Hagelin came out and he said that this is the safest he has felt since the initial virus breakout in early March. And you know what? With the way the NHL has handled this stuff, with how strict they're being, and with the limitations they've had, also the fact that they have literally zero positive tests out of all the people who went into the bubble, I'm not surprised. Furthermore, it's also the NHL officials who have had zero positive tests. The referees and linesmen have actually been in the bubbles in Edmonton and Toronto since a week ago. So these guys have been the ones who have been holed in here the longest, just waiting for NHL teams to come in and actually start making this space their homes. So now that we've gotten the safety part of it out of the way, let's talk about what actual NHL GMs, players, and other staff members are experiencing in the bubble here. We'll start off with Kyle Dubas because he mentioned that he'll be looking at various free agents <laughs> that might be available that are here in the Toronto bubble and playing. It gives a unique opportunity for a GM to observe opposing players both on and off the ice. And I saw a lot of people replying to this tweet over here by Luke Fox saying, Oh man, that's tampering, right? Like, just watching the players and actually getting a new perspective on them as they go through their daily lives? Obviously, that's kind of a joke, but at the same time, it's a very weird opportunity indeed. Being able to be in the same vicinity as all these other players and free agents to be potential clients for your own hockey team, it's certainly a weird experience. We also have ourselves some other tweets that go over what people are saying about the bubble. Here's Nashville coach John Hines. He says there is free Tim Hortons, which, I mean, some people are going to be really jealous about that, others are going to not be, because I know not everybody likes Tim Hortons, and in fact, the top reply here on the tweet is a picture of Ryan O'Reilly, because if you do remember, Ryan O'Reilly did crash his truck into a Tim Hortons a few years ago. Yeah, funny stuff. But when it comes to actually being in the same vicinity as your opponents, we have ourselves some word from Thomas Drance about the Eastern Hub in Toronto. He says that complaints are inevitable going forward, but off the hop, he's hearing a fair bit of praise for the work the NHL did, making things livable and accommodating, especially considering the scale and the tight timelines. He also has heard stories of some chirping between groups of arriving teams encountering upcoming opponents, which is tremendous. Real travel tournament vibes in the bubble. 
Ah, yes, the classic travel tournament. You're a peewee player going a few hours down the road to some big up hotel waiting to play a hockey tournament and all of a sudden you see the guys on the other team who you're going to face off the next day in the lobby. You're going to be chirping. That's going to happen. And this kind of stuff is just so nice to see because even just for one second, it feels like a sense of normalcy has come and returned because now we can just take a look at it, look down the hallway and see our opponent, start talking about him again. And it's almost like this entire situation with the virus doesn't even exist. But it's not all talk and smack, I would assume, because in the bubble, this is what Jared Spurgeon showed off for the Edmonton version. Take a look at this. This is where their morning coffee happens and there are separate tables. Looks like a whole bunch of different NHL teams are actually going to be able to come over here and socialize with one another. And of course, there's going to be some butting heads, I guess, maybe some chirps here and there, but for the most part, an environment like this where players can just come out and chill certainly seems like a very nice place to be in. Furthermore, there are a ton of YouTube videos and NHL videos and Instagram stories of players actually arriving, and the bubble honestly looks really, really secure. They have a whole bunch of security outside, everybody's wearing masks, they have gates that they only open to individuals who are able to actually be inside the bubble, and it looks like they're doing a really good job closing everybody else off. We have some vloggers though too. Casimir Kaskisuo of the Toronto Maple Leafs has been documenting the bubble life on his own YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description down below. We also had Elias Pedersen who was seen in the Canucks Instagram stories with a camera. Looked like he was vlogging out there. There was actually a little bit of a vlog he posted on Instagram that got deleted a little bit later, but we'll probably see some more from him after. We also have Charlie McAvoy from the Boston Bruins documenting his day that was posted onto the Boston Bruins official Twitter account, so you can check that out. I'll leave a link in the description as well. And furthermore, beyond that, we also have ourselves what most NHL teams would probably consider as their number one source of entertainment during their time in the bubble. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about video games. This is a photo of John Klingberg bringing his extra flat screen and Whole Foods into his bubble, he takes his gaming pretty seriously. Sticking with the Dallas Stars though, we had Steven Johns from the Dallas Stars post an Instagram story of how the bubble life is going, and he says it's going off to a hot start. Take a look at this, it's a 2.81 megabits per second download at the hotel. Oh my goodness, that's actually terrible. Oh man, so much for the league-wide Warzone Fortnite tournament that people were talking about the NHL players should do. We also have this update over here from the comment section of that Reddit post where Stephen Johns was showing his internet connection. The comment here from I'm BXI, I don't believe it's Kevin BX, I believe it's just somebody else, but he says this, I can confirm that hotels which NHL players are staying at in Edmonton have requested TELUS to upgrade their internet and provide optic TV. A team in TELUS is trying to work 24-7 to get infrastructure set up, and I'm part of the engineering design team to extend fiber into these hotels. However, from what I heard, the hotels only want a temporary solution. So instead of paying for a full upgrade and associated installation fees, they only want to pay for a fixed rental fee until the end of the tournament. So yeah, the hotel's just kind of being cheap. But at the same time, many other comments have noted that the internet speeds in Edmonton are honestly pretty okay, so they probably shouldn't have a tough time getting that download speed to a higher rate than 2.81. Man, I remember the days when I had internet that was worse than what they had. I mean, not on the upload side of things, because their upload speed, 6 point something megabits per second, that's actually really, really solid. But, I digress. Just thinking about internet speeds and poor internet speeds kind of takes me back to a place I don't really want to think about. But, that kind of wraps up what we have here for my little NHL bubble life package. First off, it's all about how good the NHL has been at restricting access and making things safe. Secondly, we have ourselves a little chirping here and there, going back and forth between teams as they adjust to actually being in the same space as each other. But a lot of that is set up because the atmosphere and the overall feeling of the bubble is very welcoming to these NHL players, and there's been so many positive things that they've been talking about here. So just seeing how the NHL has dealt with this, with the zero tests thing and actually having a bubble that the NHL players seem to like, 
it's awesome to see, especially when you compare it to how the NBA is doing their things, where players are going to other places outside of the bubble. Then you take a look at the Miami Marlins, who had more cases positive in their team than the entire country of Ireland did. So, you know, there's a lot to be desired from other sport leagues around the North American sphere, but the NHL certainly is the one that's doing things very, very well, and I really commend Gary Bettman and co. for doing that. So, that wraps up our video here today. Hockey is back. Later today, we have ourselves our first game. It's the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Philadelphia Flyers. Who knows, maybe by the time you watch this video, that game's already done, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's enjoy hockey while it comes back. Social Dash Rolls 99, and bye.